So in this lecture, we're going to talk about how to compile, link, and install software um, on your Unix machine. So while the Unix comes with a wealth of software already installed, you're, you're absolutely, at some point in time, going to run into a case where uh, some of the software that you need or you'd like to use is not installed. And nowadays, a lot of the uh, modern Linux distributions have very nice package managers. For instance, any any uh, lit version of Linux built on Debian, which is in, includes Ubuntu, and probably the most popular, uh, inc includes a program called apt-get. Um, I'll go ahead and write that here just just so you have it. But it's uh, in, included as a program called apt-get. And uh, this is a distribution manager. So you run this, say you want to install uh, CMake or Newplot or something, you would just say, you know, apt-get. Uh, install and then the name of the, the program, you know, for instance, new plot. Okay. Um, if you're using a, a Red Hat or a Fedora version, they, they have something similar called yum. So you'd say yum install new plot or whatever. And this is a, a good way to get a lot of packages, but, but, um, and many, many, you know, especially with AppGet, uh, I would say, you know, well, maybe 75% of all open source software is available through AppGet, but but eventually you'll run into a piece of software that's not available that way, and you'll have to build it from source code. Okay, so open source code is typically distributed as source code, which means that you know it's the actual programming language files, whether they're C or C++ or Fortran, uh, you know, that were written to produce the software. So. Um, of course, there's you know many many others, Java and other things. But typically in scientific computing, mo most of the software is written in C or Fortran or C++. So uh, you know the, the terminology that I typically use to encompass the whole process of you know configuring, compiling, linking, and installing software, I refer to as kind of building or building code. Um, so this is what we're going to talk about here and, and go through an example of. Okay. So by far the most commonly used build application is uh, the GNU Make system, uh, which you can access. You know this is installed on all Unix machines. Uh, a command called Make or GMake should also run it. Um, so Make uses Make files. So Make files are the you know the input. They're text input to a program called Make. And what the Make files do is include a set of instructions that you you know is used for compiling, linking, installing the source code. So these rules, though, these instructions are typically platform dependent. They, uh, that should be dependent, dependent. So these rules are, are typically platform dependent. They depend on the compilers and other things. So in order to first do that, they must be configured. So this is not the case in every single piece of open source software, but, but I would say a vast majority still use this kind of configure, make, make install system. So the first thing you need to do is uh, there should be a script in the, in the root of the source directory that you download called configure. Uh, if it's not there, then it probably uses some other build system and we'll talk about those in a second. But I would still say the vast majority of all open source systems use this configure uh, setup. So you know, basically to, to run that, if there's a configure script in the root directory, you just want to run that configure script. Uh, there are many options that uh, can go along with the, the configure script. These are a few that almost everyone has. Um, you know, some of them will have hundreds of options, but there's always a help option and there's almost all, always a prefix option. So help uh, is probably the first thing you should look at is to look at a list of all the options. Um, and then, especially when you're building on a machine that you don't have universal pr privileges for, you're going to need to set the prefix. And this is the case on Shamu here at UTSA. Where, uh, because the default prefix path, uh, the default is uh, typically user local. So this is the default. Well, on Shamu, you do not have access to write to user local. So you, you need to put it somewhere else, and this is where you'd include uh, a prefix, and so that that would you know typically be somewhere in your home directory or something like that, your local bin directory. Okay, so there's some other options that are that are almost always there, like enable shared would build shared or dynamic libraries where static libraries may may or may not be the default. 
And uh, in that case, if, if uh, shared libraries are the default, there'd probably be a command that say it enables static. There's lots of other options, you know, that you can basically enable or disable some, you know, feature, where feature could be you know, one of many, many things. So it's my advice to look at the configure help uh, first and see what's in there and see if you, you'd like to configure it. So then there are a bunch of variables that configure uses to set up your system uh, to set up the make files. And these are pretty common. There's many more than this as well, but these are the common ones. Uh, the variable CC was your C compiler, CXX, the C++ compiler, FC, Fortran compiler, uh, if it's a one required. Uh, CPP is the preprocessor to use. Uh, then your C flags, your CXX flags, your FC flags, and then any kind of linker flags. So um, a lot of times, you know, for the purposes of this class, you won't need to change anything. You can just use the default, all the defaults on. Uh, uh, so don't don't be scared about the, you know. There's many many settings, a way to customize it, but for the most part, you should be fine using the defaults. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and and give an example uh, of a configure. So um, I'm on Shamu now. Uh, uh, you can see. Sorry, I'm on Shamu, and on Shamu there's a file called new, uh, uh, an application called Newplot. Okay, and you see when you launch it, it it tells you there that you know it's version four. Well, uh, Newplot current version is 4.6.1. Um, so you know perhaps there's some features in 4.6.1 that are not in 4.0. Therefore, we require that that we need a new plot. So. Uh, I've already downloaded a new plot, the, the tar.gz file, the source code there, and then I've and then I've untarred it uh, into the this project's folder there, and and so the source code actually resides in this uh, new plot dash 4.6.1. Okay, so this is the source code. Uh, it looks messy. There's not a lot in there that you really need to worry about, except you'll notice there is that configure script. Okay, so what we want to do is then run that guy. And we'll, we'll run it with the help first just to see that there's a big listing of things that you could set, okay? Now for new plot, uh, I think pretty much for the most part, aside from setting a prefix, uh, we don't need to really change anything else. So we're going to run this with uh, the prefix command, okay? And we're going to set that prefix. In this case, I'm going to set it to my home directory, so FES788 projects, and then I want to create a new directory called new plot. By the way, if that directory doesn't exist, it will create it for you, and it's going to place all the binaries, the executable binaries, the, the libraries of whatever that is contained in that file inside that folder new plot. So uh, if I go ahead and run this, you'll see it, it goes through a bunch of uh, stuff. It's setting up the system, okay? So while that's going, uh, I'm going to go back to the slides. and. So after the configuration is complete, it's a simply uh, a process of typing make. Make uh, reads the make file, which should have been set up properly by configure, and it goes on building all the uh, all your source code. Okay, you can usually build. Uh, so when it, when I say building, it's compiling the individual you know C or Fortran files or whatever, and, they, and there may be hundreds of them, and most of those can be compiled individually. So uh, if we have more than one processor on the machine, we can send each of those um, uh, out to be built on its own core, its own thread, and the way we do that with, the, with this make-j command. Now, occasionally you'll, you'll have a build that fails because it's not set up, you know, it's more of a sequential process and it's not set up to build in parallel, but this is quite rare. Um, so just, just to be aware, if you do have a build that fails for some reason and where you built it in parallel, the thing to do before you get too frustrated is just to simply type make without any parallel settings and see if it'll build that way. Okay. So we should be done over here, and it is. I can actually build a new plot you know, on many processors, and I'll just go ahead and build it with eight processors. So you see and through, and, and basically when I say building, it's actually compiling all the individual files that are included in there, uh, and then in the end it links them all together into a single executable. Okay. Now, uh, many really, you know, especially the good open source projects will have uh, test suites. And so if you want to run the test suite, if you go back to the slide there, I have a note that says if the project has a test suite, you can 
you can run it with uh, make check. So in this case, uh, sometimes uh, the syntax is also make test. Uh, and for GNU plot, it's actually make check. So if I type make check, it's going to run a long suite of test suites. Uh, in this case, it's actually going to pop up an X window. Uh, and it will run through a whole bunch of plots that it's checking out. So once I hit enter here, it'll run it. I'll pull the X window over into the screen where you can see it. So there you should be able to see all of the uh, little different test suites that it's running. And every time, you know, basically it, it passes a test, it'll, it'll print out an error if it, if it uh, fails a test. And this is important. If it fails a test, it could be some settings, some libraries that are missing or something. And so that you want to probably go back and try to rebuild it, uh, correcting the failed tests. All right. So I, I already know this builds correctly, so I'm going to go ahead and just control C and, and, and quit that guy. Okay. So the final thing we need to do, uh, as listed there, is to install it. And so when we type make install, it's going to install in the, in the prefix uh, that we had set. So if I then type make install, uh, it's going to put everything into the prefix that we had set. The full path to that, remember, was home projects. I'm sorry, home FES788 projects new plot. And then inside that, there should be a folder called bin. And inside that should be the executable that was built. So now, if we run that guy, you'll see instead of GNU plot 4.0, we have GNU plot 4.6, OK? And uh, you can see the modified date there is uh, just, just a few days ago. So uh, this is how we go about building GNU plot. But it's basically the same process for most open source packages. Okay. So there are other build systems I just want you to be aware of. Uh, there's a popular set of C++ libraries called Boost that uses its own build system called BJAM, which is not that common and a little bit difficult to use. Uh, then there's the great uh, CMake, which is really the future, I think, if you're going to set out from scratch uh, and, and, ha and build up your own build system for a big software project you're using, you should probably do it in CMake. It's easy to learn. It's uh, very easy to learn. Uh, and it truly is a cross-platform make system, meaning uh, typically you, you can use CMake to generate Unix makes files. You can also use it to generate other projects, which I have listed down there below, like Eclipse Plot Projects, which is a cross-platform IDE, integrated development environment. Also Xcode for the Mac or Visual Studio projects uh, for the Windows, which you can actually generate from CMake. So in my advice would be, uh, you know, if you really want a cross-platform build system, you use CMake. Then, if you you know, if you build it on a Windows machine, and then I'm sorry, if you build it on you know, write your code on a Linux or Unix machine, then you want to send it over to somebody who has Windows. They can easily generate a Visual Studio project, open it up, build it in there. So, I uh, wanted you to be be aware of these other build systems as well. But by far, the configure make make install system is is what you're going to encounter the most.